Hey, you guys. I wanted to I wanted to get on here for a minute. It's not going to be an hour, but I wanted to get on here and give you an encouraging word. Um, that the word is I'm, I'm studying my notes. I'm going everything for the conference, and um, you know the Lord. I'm I'm sitting here in His presence, and He's speaking to me, and I um, am just hearing <laughs> something that I feel like I want to share with you guys to encourage you and I might share a little bit of my dream last night I'm just gonna wait for some people to get on hey Misty hey Debbie Jesus 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 Lord I pray that you would anoint me to speak your heart that you would um, use me as a vessel to encourage, to bring wisdom, to bring understanding, to increase knowledge, to be a container for your glory and your power here during this time, that your words would not return void, that you would give people um, the ability to receive, that you would open eyes, that you would open ears, that you would change hearts, that you would uh, set captives free, Lord, that you would get to people what it is that they need, that, that you would show them the right door and show them which key that I'm giving will open what door needs to be open. Lord, I pray against darkness. I pray against ignorance in your body, Lord. You said that your people die for lack of knowledge. So I pray, God, for all the people that are going to um, hear this either now or later on, um, that it would bring life, that it would restore life in certain areas, that it would be like a light come on, God. <clears throat> I thank you that you have stationed angels around us. I thank you, Lord, that you <laughs> are invested in our lives bringing glory to you. And Lord, I know that you have created us with a purpose and we want to operate our lives the way that you have designed them to operate so that we can live the kind of life that brings glory to you. And that we can show people the truth, <laughs> the way, through our own lives, being in alignment with you, Jesus. Father God, I thank you that we can come to you, that we can be strengthened. Lord, we just speak right now. We depend on you. Yeah, Dave got off okay. He's, a, he's off in Colorado. Lord, we depend on you for your grace. We depend on you for your mercy, your grace with the strength to even do what we need to do once we understand what it is. And I just pray today that people would be released from weariness, released from a feeling of powerlessness. God, help us to tap into your power. Help us to tap into your power and learn how to receive power from on high to make the changes that need to be made in our lives. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Radical faith. Okay. <sighs> Lord, help me to deliver this word. <clears throat> There is, and, and this isn't for everybody, and this isn't for everybody all the time. This is for some people some of the time, most of us some of the time. I am feeling a really strong desire to say, some people are praying wrong. <laughs> some people are praying wrong. Some people are praying for their situation to change, and they, their situation is not changing. And the reason why it's not changing is because you're praying the wrong prayer. I feel like the Lord is wanting me to tell you to pray 
for wisdom and understanding begin before you even waste any more energy praying the same thing over and over again asking for the same thing you know the bible said when you ask you receive so what you're asking and you're not receiving what's going on here <laughs> what is going on here god because i believe your word's true now the bible does say ask and keep on asking the persistent widow <clears throat> but something is stuck you feel stuck you feel like the situation isn't shifting the situation isn't moving and there's a key and the key is a different kind of praying in many cases and the enemy has blinded the eyes of many believers it is a Astounding to me how many believers still believe they are powerless over their circumstances. <laughs> we are not powerless. We are not powerless. We've been given power from on high. Jesus took the keys and left them with us. He left us with a book full of keys, principles. <laughs> how things work, how to unlock doors. Very specifically, there are people that are staying stuck simply because they do not truly understand that they, that in many cases, the door's already been unlocked. It's open. And they're just sitting there in the prison cell praying that God would set them free. God would change their situation and they just have to turn around. They have to turn around and see that the door is open. It's already open for many people. The door's already open. And I'm and I'm not trying to call anybody out and this is just a great example because it's in front of me and this is really what's making me preach this <laughs> right now. This is what's brought it up. You know, the Lord Shows you things from your own life. Some parables. This is a parable. This is not me picking on anybody, okay? This is not me picking on anybody. But this is an example. And there's, you know, when you give an example, just like a parable, there's many um, faucets of it. It's not all, or facets as some people would say. It's not all one thing. But for the purpose of making a point, I'm going to focus on the one thing here. So, I had a lot of people buy conference tickets that aren't coming. And people that have said, and, and really, it's neither here nor there. For me, I trust God and I don't, you know, I don't attach myself to what other people are doing. It's not a personal insult. It's not a personal anything. This is just for the point of what I'm making right here. People who said, the Lord told me to step out on faith and buy that ticket, but then this, 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 that, something else. So I'm not coming. Now, either you didn't hear from God and, and put this to whatever it is that you're saying. You know, God told me, da, 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 but it's not happened because this, 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 that, and something else. We need to understand as people of God not just to hear from him, to understand from him. And, and yes, sometimes we mishear. We don't understand the whole thing. We get closer and we see we know we only knew in part. And maybe we need to do this for that to get to this point. So I'm not picking on anybody. <laughs> but for many people, God wants to give you something. He has something for you <laughs> here. And he's told you, go from here to here. You've heard him say, you're here. God told me to go here, but I don't have the money. This is getting in the way. I've got to do this. This is the parable that comes back to the banquet. You know, Jesus is talking about the banquet, talking about the kingdom of heaven. It's like a, you know, a banquet. I've prepared this banquet and I've invited people. Do you guys remember that little song when you were little? I cannot come to the banquet. Don't bother me now. I have married a wife. I have bought me a cow. I got bills and commitments that cost cost a pretty sum. Pray hold me excused. I cannot come. The kingdom of God is here. 
<laughs> everything that you need was within the kingdom. And when God tells you go, and you say you have faith, you've heard. And if you are praying and believing that there's something out there that is stopping you from having what the Lord has told you he has for you, you are deceived. And you're not going to get very far in the kingdom. You're not going to move past your issues and problems if you are saying you hear from God, moving in a certain direction, and then you get blocked, or then there's this, or then there's something else, and you say, pray hold me excused. <laughs> I cannot come. This is not me picking on anybody. This is not about my conference. I'm telling you, it's not. This is just kind of an example for me. And it should just be taken as an example. This is not about the conference, okay? He's supposed to be there. We'll be there. God arranges everything. He's moving. He's working. We're all in different places. You know what I'm saying? It's not personal. It's not personal about the conference. I mean, apply it to anything. Apply it to anything. You have a job that you cannot stand. It's uh, hurting your body. It's, uh, you know, this, that, something else. And you've been in it for two years. <laughs> you know God has a better job for you. And you're praying for a better job. Lord knows he's promised me a better job. Why is that better job not coming? And you've put out two resumes. Two. You haven't revamped your resume in a year and a half. Know what I'm saying? You know, quit praying for a job. <laughs> Revamp your resume. Get out there. Follow up on things. You know, sometimes we're just too, we wimp out too quick and too easy. You know, if you're going to really have everything God has for you to have, you've got to press in. You got to press in. You got to push past things. You got to cr get creative. You know, Okay, let's say your child wants a certain present for Christmas and you desire to give them that present, okay? This might be for somebody prophetically right now. It's two months away. You don't have the money to get them that present. You feel in your heart God would, wants them to have that present. You don't have the money for it. Do not pray that God drops that present off on your doorstep. Go find some things and have a yard sale. Sell some old toys. Get a second job. <laughs> and you be Jesus by buying that present for your kid that you believe God wants them to have. <laughs> this is... Now, when I say that, that is not to say that God can't miraculously drop that present on your doorstep through another person. Because he can. He can drop that present. And he has done stuff like that for me. But if you, you know, the Bible said it is a, uh, the Pharisees are said, give us a sign that you're from God. He said, it's a wicked generation that asks for a sign. It's a wicked generation that asks for a miracle that's always waiting for a word. <laughs> this is a word right now for you or for at some point, <laughs> for, you know, <sighs> miracles are part of walking in the kingdom of God. Shouldn't even have to ask for them. But they come when they need to come. They'll be there supernaturally. It's just part of kingdom living. But you're not in the kingdom if you don't operate within the laws of the kingdom. So I'm just really prophesying. It's really teaching a right now word that a lot of people want godly relationships God's told them to move towards these godly relationships. But they get pulled back by an ungodly relationship, an ungodly tie. They are putting that ungodly tie above the forward provision. And you can't sit there and pray, God, bring me godly relationships. God, me relationships. And God says, okay, I want you to go sign up for that class. Let's put it away from me so people don't think it's a personal thing. I want you to go sign up at this class at church and be a part of this women's meeting. Well, that day comes around and this, that, or something else happened. Do you honestly think Satan's going to roll out the red carpet on the day of that class when you've prayed for godly friendships and then your old 
friend calls or whatever and you know this that or something else you've you've poured it's it's poor uh throwing your pearls before swine that person's not you know hasn't responded in 10 years might be your boyfriend that you're with you want a relationship you can't just pray lord i want you to make this relationship a godly relationship <laughs> no you got to say i want Godly relationships, however you got to do it. I want those next level relationships that are mutually beneficial. Some people, this is a word of exhortation because you've poured and 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 you've poured and, you've poured. and you're depleted. You're worn out and you're saying these relationships stink. <laughs> now, I mean, some of them are God ordained. You got to pour for a season, you know. But some of them are just codependent. God, give us discernment. This is where we need to pray. Not for that, that to change. Lord, align my thoughts with your thoughts. Make me agreeable. Help me to see what I am not seeing. We need to press in and believe the Lord for some relationships with people who don't have planks. <laughs> so that we can get around other people who can see clearly, who can help us get this, you know, the speck out of our eye. <laughs> Jesus, 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 Jesus. Lord, help us, empower us to know we, we aren't feeble, weak. Uh, the weakness, you are only weak if you are doing things in your own strength. Because the Lord says his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Do you honestly, you guys have got to understand, and I hope I'm not sounding ugly, because I'm not meaning it ugly. It's really, really meant with deep concern. Deep concern. Do you think that the people who are walking in the blessings of God who are walking in measures of freedom and, and measures of glory did, had it easy to get there, never had to push past anything or never worked hard or never, you know, applied the principles that they learned. No, God is not a respecter of persons. <laughs> you follow the principles that are in the word of God and they'll work for you just like they work for the next person. And don't, don't think, I, I pray for wisdom to understand the difference between demonic resistance and God leading you in a different direction. And there's a difference. And too many Christians are saying, God's leading me here and God's leading me there. And now he's turned me and he's leading me over here. God's not, he's not confused like that. <clears throat> Jesus. If he says, let's go to the other side, that's where he intends to take you. When the storms come, don't jump out of the boat. Or you're not going to get to the other side. <laughs> and if he tells you this boat's sinking, get out the boat. <gasps> Walk to me. Get out of the boat before you sink with it. I just, I really, I feel like there are so many open presents. There's so many people crying out to God, crying tears, crying tears, hurt. Lord, Lord just doesn't want to meet my needs. And he is going. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. Maybe God's a little, a little different about it. He's like, what you need is right here. Come here. Come here. I got what you need. I got what you need. You're not going to get it if you stay there. You got to come here. Come unto me, all of ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It requires leaving where you are and going to where he is. <laughs> Don't stay where the enemy's messing everything up. I had a dream last night <clears throat> and I was fighting snakes and what I was doing and I and I feel like we need to do this be aware what are we hearing is it the voice of the enemy because people will say 
the enemy's doing this and that and something else, so I can't do what God told me. If you already know it's the enemy doing it, why in the world would you not 10 times more make sure you go ahead and do what God told you to do and not fall for it? Because a lot of people are saying, I know it's the enemy. I know the enemy's blocking me. What do you really want? Do you want to be free? Honestly, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. In that dream, and let me tell you, not all my dreams and my conquering, not all my dreams are conquering. I'm speaking to myself. I'm preaching to myself. But this dream, I was taking the mouth of the massive snakes and I was holding them shut. And that was how they would die. I held their mouth shut long enough and it would die. So, it's a dream about silencing the voice of the accuser, silencing the voice of the enemy. Say, shut it, Satan. I'm not listening to you. I'm going to do what God's told me to do. Hold it shut. The l less you listen, the less uh, you know, air time you give the enemy in your ear, eventually you just keep holding that mouth shut. Don't, eh, you can't speak enough, not listening, not listening, not listening, not listening. Hand over your ears. <laughs> I'm hearing what you're saying. I heard what God said. I'm going to do what God told me to do. And I guess I, I, I'll, I'll end this with something really positive and really encouraging. If God told you to do something, if you think that you cannot do it because of the enemy, that's why you cannot do it because of the enemy. If you think you cannot do something God told you to do because God's holding, I mean, really think this through. Who, if you hear God, and a lot of people are concerned, maybe they didn't hear God or they misheard, you know, it's not an exact science. <clears throat> well, kind of it is, because you 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 can learn how he operates and discern certain things. But you know, God's not a tame lion. <laughs> That's what C.S. Lewis said. So he works it all out. He's working it all out. But God wants to provision you to do the things that he's called you to do. And he wants to, he wants me to tell you that you are able, you are well able to take the land. That's the, the point of this whole thing. You are well able to do whatever God's called you to do. And be aware, if you don't, things can slow down. I mean, things can slow down, come to a halt, go backwards. You're not moving forward with God. I don't know that there's even a standstill place for a follower of Christ. You're not moving forward with God, tend to move backwards. Yeah, this is not, Amber asked, what about timing? Abraham waited 25 years. This isn't about waiting on the Lord. You, this isn't about going off and doing your own thing in your own strength. This is about the things that God has spoken to you and told you, holding on to them. And walking in obedience. <clears throat> and there's a lot of things that take some time. But even that, you're not going to get there if you're not walking in obedience. So you don't forget that whole generation of Israelites headed towards the promised land, died out there in the wilderness because grumbling and complaining and all the stuff that they did, idol worship and <laughs> just walking in circles out there in the desert. There's no guarantee just because you're going to heaven, you you've received Christ, that you're going to have um, a, a life where you're ruling and reigning with Christ while you're here. That's up to you. God's not going to do it for you. <laughs> obedience is the, like, master key. You know, if we have a ring of keys, obedience is the master key. It opens every door. <laughs> 
so I love you guys, and I just wanted to get on here and encourage you. Um, be talking about this more at the conference. If you guys have not signed up for the live stream, it's still available. $65. Put it in the PayPal and live stream, and it is worth the investment. It is an investment. It is an investment. The Bible says those who have more will be given, and those who don't have even what they have will be taken away. <laughs> what is that? What does that even mean? You're not going to invest. You got to invest. It's not just financially. You got to put yourself into it. You got to go after it. You got to seek it. I love you guys.